At the time we were doing it, we did, probably didn't quite realise what we'd achieved. And it's really only the day after we realised that was a, a record. It woke up a little bit of a hornet's nest. Yeah, I think we were, we were kind of pleasantly surprised that it worked as well as it did. Yeah, we were all going to a pub and dancing the whole night. <laughs> no, don't bring that. Uh, no, I think when we broke the record, it was quite important as we showed that in a limited spectrum, we can actually deliver up to 20 times more data than we can do in current wireless system. And if you think about that 5G is all about to increase the overall capacity by 1,000 times, this is already a great step and a great part. The massive MIMO approach with its spatial multiplexing, which is given to us through the large number of antenna elements, really is um, a, a complete technology revolution. It's a disruptive technology. For me, massive MIMO can give us orders of magnitude improvement without the need for additional bandwidth, and that's critical. What we have here in the setup is 64 USRP radios, each with two RF chains, so that's 128 elements. So there's a significant amount of hardware that has to work simultaneously. It all has to be synchronized, and we have to eventually bring all the data from all the radios together in one place and centrally signal process it. So with the NI MIMO prototyping system, we were able to alleviate some of the pain of this development through an integrated software and hardware platform that NI provide. So we could actually simplify a lot of the base layer of connecting the things together and getting data flowing, um, which typically there would be a lot of legwork just to get that happening. So we could do this and then we could focus on actually implementing the functionality required for the system on top of it. I don't think many people really worry about how their mobile device is connected to a network. What they want it to do is, is work and Massive MIMO will make it work exceedingly fast. The real drive in the race is because we're just running out of bandwidth in 4G. Customers are demanding more and the operators are struggling to be able to deliver it. And I think whoever gets there first is going to open up you know, huge societal and economical benefits.